Welcome to this predicted paper from OnMaths. This paper represents the best guess for the upcoming exams. Please use this paper in addition to your other revision. You can complete a unique version of this paper by going to our OnMath site. OnMaths is full of free content to help you prepare for your exams, such as topic-based papers, demon questions, and mini-mocks. If you like what we do, please consider subscribing. Enjoy! If I split this shape into two sets of six blocks, when we're asked to shade in three sixths, for each one of those, or each set of blocks, I'm going to shade in three of the six. So that's three for the first set, and this is three for the second set. And that's our answer. Now you might notice that three over six is the same as a half, because you can divide on one by three, and so all I need to do is shade in a half. Or you might convert three over six into six over 12. And there's 12 squares altogether, so it's six of the 12 squares. There's lots of ways of doing this question. If there were 39 people on the bus and four people were, got off the bus, that would leave 35 people remaining on the bus. So the fraction of people staying on the bus is 35 out of the 39 people on the bus. So our answer is, as a fraction, 35 over 39. We can't cancel that any further. To convert between metres and centimetres, we times by 100. So we do 12.31 times by 100, which would be 1,231 centimetres. For us to create the largest number, we need to pick the biggest digits for the start of the number. So the biggest digit is 7, then 6, then 4, then 3. But the question says it wants the largest even number. So we need to just swap the last two around to make sure that it is even. So our answer is 7,634. So we need to first of all understand what a cube number is. So a cube number is the answer to when you get three integers or whole numbers and we multiply them by themselves three times. So one times one times one is one, two times two times two is eight, three times three times three is 27, four times four times four is 64, and five times five times five is 125. So 1, 8, 27, 64, 125 are all cube numbers and it goes on forever. And this question's asked us to find all the odd or an odd cube number that is smaller than 100. So it has to be odd, so that gets rid of the 8 and the 64, and it has to be smaller than 100, so that gets rid of the 125. So I can either write down um, 1 would be a fine answer, or 27. I'm going to go for 1. This question's all about like terms. So what we can do is we can add this 10u with this 11u to make 21u. We can also add this 6v with this plus 4v to make 10 V. We can also add this 10w to this minus 6w. So 10 take away 6 is 4w, so plus 4w. But we can't add a u term to a v term to a w term. So we have to just leave them be. So our answer is 21u plus 10v plus 4w. But we can multiply them we just can't add or subtract them. So we're going to start by writing 5 over 9 as a decimal and to do that we just need to do 5 divided by 9 which will be 0 0.5 recurring and to convert between a decimal and a percentage we just times by 100 so we're going to get that 0 0.5 recurring and we're going to times it by 100 and that will equal 55.555 recurring and to the nearest percent, that's going to be 56, because that 5 will move that 5 up by 1. 
So if we just add the amount of sides each of these shapes has, a triangle has three sides, quadrilateral four, pentagon five, hexagon six. And notice what's happening with the number of edges. They're multiplied by three. Each time they're multiplied by three. So all we need to do is get the 15, multiply it by three, which will be 45. So there'll be 45 edges. If you imagine these numbers written out as a list, there would be five lots of zero. So one, two, three, four, five. There'd be nine lots of one. So one, one, etc., etc. Okay. So when we're looking to see the total number of goals scored in the season, we could write them out as a list and then add them up. But a quicker way of doing that is just multiplying the amount of goals by the frequency. So we've got five lots of zero goals, which will just be zero. Nine lots of one goal, so that's just nine. Four lots of two goals, so that's eight. Six lots of three goals, so that's 18. And then six lots of four goals, so that's 24. So all we need to do now is add up the uh, 0, 9, 8, 18 and 24, which brings us to 59. So there were 59 goals scored. Let's start just by copying out the question. So we've got x over 12 equals 4. And when we're asked to solve, it means we need to find out what x is. We need x equals. And the method for doing it is just by putting lines either side of the equal sign, our solving lines. And what we need to do is we need to get x on its own on the left-hand side. What's stopping x from being on its own? This over 12. What does over 12 mean? Well, it means divide by 12. So how do we get rid of it? Well, we do the opposite, the inverse of divided by 12. What is the opposite of divide by 12? Times 12. Now, these lines show us that whatever we do on the left-hand side, we have to do on the right-hand side. So we have to times 12 both sides. So on the left hand side we're left with x, on the right hand side we do 4 times 12 which is 48. So our solution is x equals 48. If we tried to draw a quadrilateral with a pair of parallel sides, and then it's a quadrilateral so join them up, it's got four sides, then the shape we draw will always be a trapezium. So our answer is that it is a trapezium. Now you might think that a rectangle and square do does have one pair of parallel sides, but it actually has two pairs of parallel sides. The definition of a trapezium is it has just one pair of parallel sides, and any quadrilateral that has one pair of parallel sides is a trapezium. Medium means middle of an ordered list. Now when numbers are put in a stem leaf diagram, it means by default they are in order. So we're going to cross out the smallest and largest number. So the smallest number is the 4 here. Well, actually that represents 34. The largest is this 69 up here. Put a pen away. Then cross out the smallest. Well, the next smallest is 39. And the next largest is this 59. So I'm always going to the top left, then the bottom right. So the top left number is this 43. Bottom right number is this 54. Top left number is this 44. Bottom right number is this 53. Now, here's a problem. We're left with two numbers in the middle, this 49 and this 52. So whenever we're left with two numbers, what we do is we add them together, divide by two. So to find the median, we're going to do 49 plus 52, and we're going to divide that by two. So 49, oh, 49 plus 52 is going to be 101 divided by 2 and 101 divided by 2 is 50.5 or 50 and a half. And again realize that 50 and a half is halfway between 49 and 52. When a number is next to a letter we actually have a time sign there so I'm going to rewrite this question as 4 times a times 9 times b. What I'm going to do is put the numbers together, so 4 times 9, and then put the letters at the end. Now 4 times 9 is 36, so it would be 36 times a times b, and in algebra we don't put the time signs, so it's 36a b.
So what we need to do is find out where the graph is at its highest and set its highest here. And so if we go down from there, we find out what year it is. Well, these years seem to be going up in one. So that's 1950, 1951, 1952. So the answer would be 1952. So firstly, we're going to work out what the um, percentage increases are as a multiplier. So we start off with 100%. Uh, Jane has a 1.2% interest, uh, pay rise, sorry. And so that would be 101.2%. And we divide that by 100 to make it a multiplier. The multiplier is 1.012. So we get the 20,000 times it by 1.012, and that gives us 240. Next, we do the same for Lenny. So that is Jane. And so let's do Lenny. And so that's 100% uh, plus the 1.5% will be 101.5%. Um, Make that a multiplier, 101.5%. We divide that by 100, which gives us 1.015. And then finally, what we do is we get the 17,000 times it by the multiplier. And when we do that, we get 255. So Lenny has 255. Jane has 240. So it says which of the employees has a larger pay increase and by how much. So the answer will be Lenny and uh, it's by £15 because that's the difference between these. So we're asked to reflect this shape across line x equals 0. So we've got to first of all work out where the line x equals 0 is. The line x equals 0 is going to be the y-axis because it's where anywhere along that line x coordinate is going to be zero and so to find out where our new shape will be you pick a point on our triangle and you count how many jumps to get to that line so one two three four five and then we get a count another five one two three four five so our, one of our coordinates is going to be here do the same thing again pick the one to the right so one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven so we've got a coordinate here and finally we've got this coordinate here so one two three four five one two three four five and as you get good at it, you don't necessarily need to do all three. You might only need to do one, and you can figure out the rest of them from that. And let's just make sure this is nice and straight. And it says to label our triangle B. So with a stem and leaf diagram, the numbers in the middle often represent tens. They could be units. Um, so we look at the key first of all, and we see that three line nine means 93 so the numbers in the middle are going to represent 10 so this is a 90 now we're looking for English so this will be 92 so our first number will be 92 then this will be 10 tens and a 4 so it'd be 104 11 tens and 1 so 111 and then 11 tens and 2 so to find the median, we go cross out the biggest and smallest until we're left with one or two in the middle. Here we're left with two. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add the 104 to the 111, and we're just going to divide that by two. So when we do that, we get 107 and a half or 0.5. So our answer is 107.5. So for this question, we need to understand that the units um, we currently have are in meters per second, and the units we want to get them to or convert them to are 
kilometers per hour. Now to convert um, the meters part is quite easy because all we need to do is divide by a thousand. And when you divide the top of a fraction by a thousand, you just, all you do is you just divide the whole thing by a thousand. So we're just going to divide the whole thing by a thousand. So we've got 95 and we're going to divide the whole thing by a thousand. So we get 0.095 and that's going to be kilometers per second because we haven't dealt with the seconds yet. So that's the easy part. The more difficult part is converting the seconds to hours. So to convert seconds to hours, we divide by 60 and then divide by 60. So we divide it by 360. Seems simple enough. But the seconds are at the bottom of a fraction. And when you divide the bottom of a fraction by something, you actually times the whole fraction by that thing. So we're going to times the whole fraction by 360. And so we do 0.095 times 360, and you get the answer of 342 kilometers per hour. So our answer is 342 kilometers per hour. First thing I'm going to do to answer this question is I'm just going to quickly draw out the um, shape again, just so I can kind of show the calculations a bit easier. Okay, the first thing um, I'm going to do on the diagram is convert all of these lengths to centimetres. So we've got 4,200, 1,200, 2,400, and 1,800. And next I'm going to convert them into what um, the scale says they're going to be in our diagram. So a scale of 1 to 600 means 600 in real life, and this diagram is showing the real life situation, is 1 on our diagram. So I've converted them all in centimetres, and now I need to work out how many centimetres there are going to be on our diagram. So I'm going to start with the 4,200, and all you need to do is divide it by 600, and I get the answer of 7. So it's going to be 7 centimetres on our diagram. 1,200 divided by 600, it's going to be 2. So that's going to be 2 centimetres on our diagram. Um, 2,400 is obviously going to be 4 centimetres. And um, 1,800 divide that by the 600, so obviously going to be 3. So that's going to be 3 centimetres. So now we know what it's going to be on our diagram. We draw it. So we're going to do 7 across, so 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six, seven across there. I'm going to do two down. So one, two, four across. One, two, three, four. I'm going to do the left hand one first, I think. So we're going to do three down here. And then we just kind of join it up with what's left over. And that's our diagram. So we've just got to go around this two way table filling in what we can. Um, so if we look here, the uh, total amount completely is 25, so it's 25 students, and the total who said yes is 17. So if we take the 17 away from the 25, that leaves us 8. So 8 must have said no. Then same thing with here. Um, there are um, 17 in total who said yes, 12 picked salad, and so therefore we take the 12 away from the 17 and we get 5. And so the total for the pizza is, will be 6. And then 6 plus 19 is 25. So we've got this bit along here. And then 12 plus 7 is 19. And we can check that as well. 1 plus 7 equals 8. So we know we've got it right. The formula for the area of a trapezium is half... A plus B times H. Now A and B are the lengths of the bases of the trapezium. Now it's easy to find the bases because they are the ones that are parallel. It doesn't actually matter which way round we label these, so I'm always going to put A on the left and B on the right, 
or I always put A on the top and B at the bottom, but it doesn't matter which way around you put them. The height, which is represented by H, always hits the bases, A and B, at 90 degrees. You can see that this length here does not hit the bases at 90 degrees. This is an acute angle, this is an obtuse angle. So that is not the height. The height is going to be this one here because it hits both of the bases, A and B, at 90 degrees. So let's put these values into our formula. So half times 5.4 plus 7.6 times 2.3 so that's going to be half of 13 times 2.3 and that's going to be 6.5 times 2.3 and that will be 14.95 all the units are in centimeters therefore the unit of the area will be in centimeters squared so to draw a line of best fit, you want to make sure that roughly there's the same amount of um, data on top of your line and below your line. Um, now, but if you think about it, this line here would also would work uh, according to that rule. Clearly, the um, line of best fit needs to go with the data. So I'm going to start it roughly here and then just draw a line going down like that. Now, you might notice that sometimes... Um, like say so if I draw that you might notice that we've got uh, one two two below maybe this one as well three below and then one on top don't worry too much if there's not a complete equal amount on top or below um, what we mean is if it looks like that that's clearly wrong because you've got um, all of the data below and obviously this one here you want it roughly so that um, there's equal amounts at the top and bottom. But if if you have it slightly off, so slightly down here or something, um, don't rub it out. Um, it's chances are you'll get the mark. They're quite lenient when you draw lines of best fit. Whenever you have angles on parallel lines, you always draw out the letter in which they create. So we could have a situation here where the two angles create a Z like this and those will be alternate they could create a Z like this that would also be alternate they could create a C which looks like that and that would be interior current or allied depending on your preference they could be a backward C again that would be interior current or allied or they could look like an F. Now there are several F's, about four F's that they could look like. There's the F like this. There's the same thing but backwards. And there's the upside down versions. So you have the ones that go out this way. And the actual one we've got here, if I don't move that, the actual one we've got here which goes inwards like that seem to be moving things. Let's try that again. Um, so, with all the F angles, we know that they're corresponding. Now, how do we figure that out? How do we remember that? There's loads of different ways. The way I remember it is, I remember cor F ponding for corresponding. I remember all's turnit for alternate, and then either co-interior, interior, allied, I just remember as the other one. So interior, I just remember as the kind of C one, the other one. And so with this question, we've got X is equal to 73 because of F angles, and I just remember cor F bonding. So the word I write down isn't obviously cor F bonding, but cor S bonding. And it sounds silly, but I've remembered that for all my years teaching. I used to get um, corresponding and alternate mixed up. That was the way I remembered it. And I've never had an issue with corresponding alternate angles again. So whatever method you have, just to help you remember which one to pick, obviously have a method in advance of the exam. And then when this question comes up, 
you'll be more than happy to pick the right one. The experimental probability is the successful outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes. So we're looking for the probability that it's white. So it's going to be 25 over, and we're just going to do 35 plus 25 plus 31, which is 91. And that's our probability, 25 over 91. Be careful when, when it say total, you must include all of the outcomes. So red, white, and other. Integer just means whole number. So we're looking for all the whole numbers that satisfy these two inequalities. Well, the first inequality says that it has to be greater than three. So the smallest number that is greater than three is four. The second uh, inequality says it has to be less than or equal to eight. So I'm just gonna keep going till I get to a number that is less than or equal to eight. It can't be nine because nine is not less than or equal to eight. So our answer is four, five, six, seven, and eight. So to find the area of a rectangle, we just multiply the width and the length. So that's what we're gonna do here. But whenever you have an expression representing a length or a width or, or anything really, you just put brackets around it. So we go u minus two times u plus nine. Okay, and the way we do this is with our grid. And I'm just gonna draw out the grid. And so we've got u minus two, and we're multiplying it by u plus nine. Don't want too many for some reason. And so we've got u times u, which is u squared, u times minus two, which is minus two u, nine times u, which is nine u, and nine times minus two, which is minus 18. And what we're gonna do is we're just normally gonna be able to add these ones together. So our answer will be u squared, and then we're going to do 9u plus minus 2u. Well, that's just going to be 9u take away 2u, which is 7u. So plus 7u, and then minus 18 at the end. So when we say y is directly proportional to x, what we mean is whenever x doubles, y will double. Whenever x halves, y will halve. Um, now, we've got this um, proportionality sign here. And to make that in equals, all we need to do is introduce a k constant to the right-hand side. So it's y equals something times x. Now to find out what that something is, to find out what that constant is, what we're gonna do is feed in the value of y and the value of x that we have. So we're gonna feed those in. So y is 55.3 and x is seven. So it'd be seven k. And we're just gonna put our lines in and solve this. So it's going to be divide by seven both sides and 55.3 divided by seven is 7.9, and that's what k is. So we're gonna rewrite this equation here, this formula here, y equals 7.9x, and that is actually our answer. The first thing we need to do is work out the area of the floor, and you'll notice that this is a trapezium. So with a trapezium, it, the formula is half a, B, uh, a plus B times H, and A and B are the parallel sides, so these ones are the parallel sides, and the height is the one connecting the two um, bases, the two parallel sides. So we're going to start off by writing down the formula, so it would be half A plus B H, so half times uh, 2.8 plus 1.2 times 11. And when we do that, we get 22. So the area of the floor is 22 meters squared. And it says here that the tiles are sold in packs which cover three meters squared. So if each pack covers three meters squared, we're gonna do 22 divided by three which will be 7.33 packs that we need. Now obviously you can't get uh, 0.3 of a pack or 0.33 of a pack. 
So we're going to have to get eight packs and just have some left over. So we'll need eight packs in total. Okay, next thing we um, look at is the fact that the uh, Jenny has a 25% discount. Um, so we need to find out what 25% um, discount would do to the £18.60 for the tiles, or for the pack of tiles. And so what we're going to do is we're going to get the £18.60, and we're going to times it by 0 0.75. We're just going to find um, three quarters of it because she has a 25% discount, and that would be 1,395. So that um, the uh, tiles are going to cost 13 pound 95. Um, now I've done this in pence and I've kind of muddled it together here. So really, let's just go back because I've kind of done this in pence. So that would be uh, 1,860 times 0 0.75 and so each pack will cost 1395 and the reason we're doing this in pence is the answer needs to be given in pence uh, so I might as well just make that conversion now and so it's going to be eight lots of the 1395 pence packs which will cost in total 11,160 pence or 111 pounds 60 but Jenny has a hundred pound to spend, and we're asked how much extra does she need. So we're going to do the one thousand, oh, sorry, eleven thousand one hundred and sixty. Take away the ten thousand pence that she has, which will give us one thousand one hundred and sixty pence. So she needs to find eleven pound sixty or one thousand one hundred and sixty pence from somewhere. So the only way of answering this question is to work out what these are as ordinary numbers. And so 7 times 10 to the power of 7 would be 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And 9 times 10 to the power of 4 would be uh, 90,000. So that would be 9, 0, 0, 0, 0. And so we're just subtracting them like that. And so we'll get uh, 6, 9, 9, one zero 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 and obviously if this is on the calculator paper just type it into your calculator there are no tricks here you can't do anything with the seven and the nine you're not subtracting powers or anything you're just literally typing in what it says um, and there's a button on the calculator like that that you will need um, to use so if you don't know what that is ask your teacher or ask someone um, to help you out with that so we're looking to write a formula for the cost in pounds of hiring a microwave for X amount of days. So the cost is C, so it's going to be C equals, and it says it's going to be um, 55 pence a day. Now, it wants the answer in pounds, so we need to convert this 55 pence into pounds. So that's going to be 0 0.55, and it's going to be 0 0.55 times the amount of days. Well, it says the amount of days is x, so it's going to be 0.55x. Then it says that there's just a one-off cost of £15. So you're going to have to pay £15 regardless. So we're just going to add 15 onto that. So the answer would be c equals 0.55x plus 15. With these questions, what we need to do is write down what we're given in the question. So it says that it, the car accelerates at 6 metres um, per second squared. So we've got the acceleration, which is 6 metres per second squared. And I'm using the same letters as it has in the question here. It says 421 seconds, so we've got the time, which is here. So the time is 21 seconds. Now, there is also something else it gives us because it says from rest. So the initial velocity is going to be zero. And it asks us to find the final velocity. So we're looking for what V is. So we're looking to see what which of the three formulae at the top involve an A, a T, a U, and a V. So it's not going to be this one because this has an S. It's not going to be this one because this has an S. It's going to be the top one. So what we do is we write down the top one. V equals U 
plus a t. And we're looking for v, so I'm going to keep v as a v. Um, u is 0, plus a, which is 6, times um, t, which is 21. 6 times 21 is 126. Obviously, 0 plus 126 is just 126. The units are meters and seconds throughout, so it's going to be uh, 126 meters per second. So we're asked to find angle BCE, and that is going to be this one here, because you start at B, go to C, and then go to E, and it's the angle you make. And I might just choose a different color, because we've already got red on here. So we're looking for this angle here. Now, my advice for these kind of questions is always just try and work your way around the shape with angles you know. So, for instance, I'm going to start with this angle here, and we're going to call this angle A, D, C. And we know that that must be 79 degrees, and always write down the reason, and we know it is because that is an isosceles triangle. So if you look, we've got an isosceles here, this one, this one, and this one. And the bottom two angles, and I use the word bottom because I always imagine an isosceles as being this way up. The bottom two angles of an isosceles are always equal, so that must be 79. Now we've got two of the three um, angles in the triangle, and the last one is going to be angle DCA. And to work out what this angle is, we're going to take it away from 180. So we're going to do 180, take away the two 79s we've just worked out. And the reason for that is angles, angles in a triangle equal 180 degrees. Okay, so when we do that, we do 180, take away the 158, and we're left with 22 degrees. So we know that this is going to be 22 degrees. And now we can actually work out angle B, C, E, because it's going to equal angle um, D, C, A. And the reason for that is they are vertically opposite angles. So that's just going to equal 22 degrees. Now, it is really common for these types of question for you to get maybe one or even two marks for the answer, but one or two marks normally for the reasons and for the explanations. In fact, I've seen quite a few um, exam questions where you get two marks for the reasons and only one mark for the answer. If I start by drawing a number line, and we're going to put the 110 in the middle, now I'm going to label the next one down and the next one up. It says to the nearest 10. So the next one down would be 100 and the next one up would be 120. Now we're interested in the cutoff and the cutoff point is between the two numbers. Okay? So that's the cutoff point. If it goes above that cutoff point, it would have rounded to the to the next number up. So if it was if the number was here, it would round to 120. If the number is on the cutoff point, which we can see is going to be 115, then we know it would round up. So we need to find the biggest number in this part here. So this part here, and it includes this line actually, so it includes this line. So all the numbers that would have rounded to 110 would have been 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 110, 111, 112, 113, 114, which would be here. But if it was 115, it would have rounded to 120. So 114 is the biggest number it could have been before rounding to 120. And we know it didn't round to 120 because in the question it says it's 110 to the nearest 10. So our answer is 114. The formula y equals mx plus c includes this m, and the m means the gradient. So we're, if we're looking for something that is parallel to y equals 9x plus 18, we're looking at this number here. 
and for it to be parallel it needs to have the same gradient so we could just write y equals 9x plus or subtract anything or we could just write y equals 9x I'm gonna say plus 5 to find the density of this wooden block, we're going to have to first of all find out what the volume of the block is. And volume is the um, cross-sectional area. Times by the length. Um, and the reason why it's that is it's a prism. And all prisms, you just find the area of the cross-section and we times it by the length. So what is the shape of the cross-section? Well, the cross-section is a triangle, and the cross-section is this part here. i just quickly colour it in. And so we're just finding the area of that triangle, so half base times height. And we're going to times it by the length, and the length is how 3D the prism is. So the base is 3, the height is 14, and the length is 5, and when you do that you get 105 centimeters cubed. Right, now we need to find out what the density is, and the formula for density is mass divided by volume. The mass is given to us in the question is 246. The volume we've just worked out whoops, is 105, and so you do 246 divided by 105, and you get 2.342 blah blah blah. And then we'd round that to two decimal places, which it says in the question to do, and that would be 2.34 grams per centimetres cubed. So in this question we've got a right angle triangle and we're asked for length BC and we're given the other two lengths. It's going to be um, Pythagoras. And so for Pythagoras I just label the sides A, B and C, but C must be the one opposite the right angle. And Pythagoras says that A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. We don't know A squared, but we know what B is, which is 5.2, and we know C is 11. So when we do that, we get a squared plus 27.04 equals 121. And we just solve. So the first thing I'm going to do is take away the 27.04 from both sides. So we get a squared equals uh, 93, oh, 9 point, no, 9, <laughs> 93.96. There we go. And to work out what A is, we just square root both sides. So it would be A equals 9.693, blah, blah, blah. Ask us to two decimal places, so we write 9.69. So if we imagine we've got the um, 25 metre pipe here, and we've got the uh, 35 metre pipe here, the question is basically asking us what can we cut all these um, pipes into and they all have to be the same length um, that will fit with the 25 meter and the 35 meter and essentially what this question is asking is what is the highest common factor of 25 and 35. So to find the highest common factor what we do is we just find the factors of 25 which is 1 and 25 and 5 and 5 and the factors of 35, which will be uh, 1 and 35, and 5 and 7. And the highest common factor is the number in both lists, the highest number in both lists, so it's 5. So what we can do is we can cut all of these um, pipes into 5 metre pipes. So uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 not to scale, <laughs> and then seven of these, so one, two, four, five, six, and so there's seven in total. So each of these are five meter long, and there's no wastage, and that's the longest we can, we can make the pipes for there to be no wastage at all. So my answer is five meters.
To find the area of a quarter circle, we first of all just assume that the circle is whole, and we work out the area that it would be if it was a full circle. So the area is pi times r squared. The radius will be this distance here, which is between the center and the circumference of the circle. So it's going to be pi times 22 squared. And when you do that on the calculator, you get 1520.530, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to keep that into my calculator because we don't have a full circle. We only have a quarter of a circle. So if we're looking for a quarter of a circle, what we want to do is we want to divide that area by four. So the area of the quarter circle is going to be the 1520.530 blah 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 divided by 4. So you keep it in your calculator from before and just type in divided by 4 and we get 380.132 blah blah blah. It says it wants it to two decimal places so we're just going to round that to 380.13. Okay, so we're going to start by writing this out a little bit bigger, give us a bit more space. So it's minus 6x is less than 60. And we're going to do our tram lines down. And we're going to start by um, dividing both sides by minus 6, because that's what this is doing. It's timesing the x by minus 6. So we're going to divide both sides by minus 6. So that gets rid of the minus 6 on the left hand side and it's going to be 60 divided by minus 6 which will be minus 10. Now we've got to be really careful here because whenever you times or divide both sides by a negative you must switch the inequality. So instead of pointing to the left it's now going to point to the right. So our answer is x is greater than minus 10. So we're going to write out the question again just to give us a bit more space. And we're going to put on our tram line so we can solve it. Now we're going to solve this in exactly the same way as if it was an equation with an equals in the middle. Um, one slight difference though is if you times or divide by a negative you've got to flip the sign. But hopefully we won't do that. Um, now the rule when you've got an x, x's on both sides is you get rid of the smaller amount. So we're going to get rid of that 4x from both sides. So we're going to take away 4x both sides. And so we're going to have 3x plus 8 is greater than 23. And then we're just going to solve this normally. So take away 8 both sides. And that will give us 3x is greater than 15. And then we're going to divide the 3 both sides. And that will be x is greater than 5. Something we know about rectangles is opposite sides are equal. So these two will be equal. And these two will be equal. And you notice now that we've got um, simultaneous equations. So what I'm going to do is get the coefficient of the y the same. And I'm going to do that by multiplying everything in the second equation by 3. So we get 6x plus 9y equals 123 and I'm just going to write in the first equation underneath because with simultaneous equations we work downwards. Now looking at the signs they are the same and the s in same is the s in subtract so we're going to subtract going downwards. We're just going to subtract going downwards. So 6x take away 3x is 3x 9y take away 9y is nothing, which is good, that's what we need. And then 123 take away 93 is 30. We're going to get our solving lines in, and we're just going to divide by 3 both sides. So we've got x equals 10. So we know what x is, but we need to find out what y is. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick one of the equations. Uh, I can pick the 2x plus 3y equals 41 and just substitute the value of x in. So 2 times, instead of x, it's times 10, plus 3y equals 41. 
plus 3y equals 41. So it would be 20 plus 3y equals 41. Get my solving lines in. And we're going to take away 20 both sides. So we've got 3y equals 21. And then we're going to divide by 3 both sides. If I don't run out of room. So y equals 7. So we've got x equals 10, y equals 7. Now I could um, check that with the first uh, equation as well. So 3 times 10 is 30. Seven to, uh, 9 times 7 is 63. 30 plus 63 is 93. So we know we've got it right. There are two shapes we need to find the volume of. There's this cylinder here and this hemisphere here. Um, so we might as well start with this cylinder. And the formula for the volume is pi times r squared times height. So it's um, the radius is 9, so 9 squared times the height, which is 30. And when we work that out, we get 7,634.070, blah, blah, blah. Next is the hemisphere. To find the volume of the hemisphere, well, the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds times pi times r cubed. But because it's a hemisphere, we just times that by a half. So it's half times 4 thirds times pi times r, which is the radius, which is 9 cubed. And that gives us 1,526.814, blah, blah, blah. And so the total volume is uh, 7,634.070, blah, 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 plus the 1,526.814, blah 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 which equals nine uh, thousand one hundred and sixty point eight eight four blah 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 it says it wants it to two decimal places so when we round that we get nine thousand one hundred and sixty point eight eight so we're going to first of all draw a tree diagram for this information you don't have to but it is um, easier to understand what's going on and so the first choice will be um, the first pick. It'll either be male or female. And the second choice will be the same, male and female. And looking at the questions, um, there are three male names in the hat and five names in total. So the fractions for the first one will be three over five. If there's three male names, there'll be two females. Now, if we picked a male name already, there'll be two left and four left in total. If we picked, uh, if we haven't picked a female, there's still two females, but there's four left in total. If we picked a female, there'd still be three males and only four left in total, but there'd only be one female left, one female name left and four left in total. Okay, we're looking for the probability that the genders of the names are different. So looking at the outcomes, the outcome here would be male, male. That's not what we're interested in. Here would be male, female. We are interested in female, male. We are interested in and female, female. We're not interested in. So we're not interested in these ones. And the way that tree diagrams work is as you go along the um, tree, um, any fractions you go across you multiply together to find the outcome. So this will be three over five times two over four. And I realize I could cancel two over four, but I generally cancel at the end. So three times two is six, five times four is 20. We're gonna do the same with the other root. So two over five times three over four. So two over five times 3 over 4, 3 quarters, that would be 6 over 20. Now we're looking to see whether it was male and female or female and male. And the word or in probability means add. So it would be 6 over 20 plus 6 over 20. And this is the probability of different, uh, which will be 12 over 20. 
Now 12 over 20 will cancel to 3 over 5 or 3 fifths. What I'm going to start off by doing is rearranging this equation so that it kind of matches this one. So I'm just going to write it down. And we want the um, n to be minus 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my rearranging lines in. And we're just going to add 10 to both sides. Now, we've already got this line drawn for us on this graph. And so all we need to do is draw this line. So we've got y, y equals 10x squared plus 8x minus 2 drawn for us. We just need to draw this line, which is y equals 10, and see where they cross over to find the solutions. So y equals 10 will be all the way up at the top. Let's just make sure I get it nice. There we are. I need to move that up a little bit. There we are. And let's read off the values that that gives us. So it comes down here and it comes down here. So the values it comes down to are uh, minus 1.6 and 0 0.8. And those are our solutions. So the angle of elevation is when you are uh, looking horizontally, like here, it's the angle that you have to look up to see something, so that castle. So this is the angle of elevation here, which I'm just going to call x. And we've got a right angle triangle here where we have two lengths and we're looking for an angle, so we're going to be using trigonometry. So we're just going to label this up. So we've got the opposite here, adjacent to here. We don't need the hypotenuse at all, so get rid of that. Let's just put our Sokotoa in. So we've crossed out the hypotenuse, so it won't be sine or cos, it will be tan. So it would be tan x is equal to the opposite, which is 49 over 98. Get our lines in. And we're going to do the inverse tan of both sides. And so the inverse tan of 49 over 98 is 26.565, etc. And it says it wants it to the nearest whole number, so that will be 27 degrees. So we need to first of all work out what the length of the um, side, well, side of the square is. And to do that, what we do is we get the 44 v to the power of 4, w to the power of 5, and we just divide it by 4. And to do that, all we need to do is just divide the um, coefficient by 4. So it would be 11 v to the power of 4, w to the power of 5. Some people will try and do something with the v to the power of 4, the w to the power of 5. But if you think about it, if I just draw out my square, if it's 11 v to the power of 4, w to the power of 5, all the way around, When you add, you don't add the v to the power of 4, w to the power of 5. It's just going to be 11 lots, another 11 lot, another lot of 11, and another lot of 11. So it's 44 v to the power of 4, w to the power of 5 in total. And to work out what the area is, we obviously are going to square that. So we're going to do 11 v to the power of 4, w to the power of 5, and we're going to just times it by itself, which is what squaring means. Okay, so we're going to times the 11s together, so that's going to be 121. We're going to times the v to the power of 4s together, and remember with indices, if you times two powers of the same base, and they're both v, um, then we just add the powers together, so that'll be 8. And we're going to add the w to the power of 5s together, so that makes 10. So it's 121, v to the power of 8, w to the power of 10. I'm going to draw out the two um, triangles that we have here just separately. And so we can see a little bit clearer about what's going on. And it's actually a good advice to actually draw them separately. 
And so here we've got AB, which is, uh, if I get off that mode, 33 meters. And so this is AB. And this other triangle is ADE. Should probably have labeled that on. And we've got the 91 there, and we've got 13 there, and then we've got 147 here. I think that's all. And we're asked to find length AD. So the first thing to notice is that these triangles are similar. And the way we know is that this angle and this angle will be equal because on the original diagram you can see that they make an F which means they're corresponding because we've got the parallel sides. Same with these two angles, they're going to be corresponding for the same reason. And this top one is a shared angle, so they're going to be equal on both diagrams. When you've got two triangles that have equal angles, they're definitely similar, so one's an enlargement of the other. If they're similar, it means that we can find a scale factor. And so what I'm going to do is just find a scale factor between the 13 and the 91. And to do that, we do the big number divided by the little number, and that gives us 7. So the scale factor is going to be 7. And we're going to work backwards with the scale factor, and we're looking for length AD, which is this length here. And so we're going to do this one, and we're going to times it by the scale factor. So times it by 7 to find out what the new length is. So 33 times 7 is 231. Whenever we draw a curve, which here we have a reciprocal here, we need to draw lots and lots of coordinates. And then we join them up with a nice smooth curved line. So we're going to um, do, basically we're going to go up, uh, up in halves. And three, right. So we're going to um, start with minus two. And we're type that into the calculator using this formula here. So we've got 1 divided by brackets minus 2 plus 8. When you type that in, you get 7.5. Could do the same thing with minus 1.5, and you get the answer of 7.3 recurring. Same thing with minus 1, you get 7, and minus a half, you get 6. Now, when you put 0 in, whenever you have 0 at the bottom of a fraction, um, you'll just get a maths error. It's it's basically you can't divide by zero, so that does not exist. That that's a positive infinity, negative infinity, or uh, undefined as mathematicians will call it. Uh, it's not technically infinity. It's a long story, but it just can't exist. So let's keep going. So we've got ten for that, uh, then one is nine, then eight point six recurring. Then 2 is 8.5, then 8.4, and then this would be 8.3 recurring, blah, blah, blah. Okay, now we start plotting this, and this is not going to be easy because the uh, scale is going up in twos. So 7.5 would be about three quarters of the way up here. Then we've got um, 7.3, which would be slightly lower. Then we've got 7, which will be slightly lower. Then we've got 6, which will be a lot lower. Okay, then we've got at 0 0.5, we've got 10. Then 9, uh, should be, yeah, be about there. Then 8.6, 8.5. Eight point four. It's very difficult to do it from these ones. Eight point three. Okay. Now, this zero here, it kind of tends towards infinity, uh, both positive and negative. On one side, it goes towards the positive infinity. On the other side, it goes towards the negative infinity. So, what uh, is helpful to do when you're drawing this line is to turn your um, page sideways. And I'm going to try my best here. I can't actually turn this sideways. So we're going to try our best to connect these up. And I've got kind of a weird hand angle going on. And so this is going to go towards negative infinity. This side, you can see it's going down there. And you can see this side here on the right hand side is going towards positive infinity. So. 
like that. Now there's no, um, there's a lot of leniency. You can see that I've probably gone too far to the left there. And so really what it should be is a little bit less dramatic maybe, more dramatic, I don't know. So I think I've done exactly the same thing. But all of what I've drawn will give you the marks. They are very, very lenient when it comes to this. The big things with this is that this line here can't go to the left of the y-axis for this question, and this line here can't go to the right of the y-axis. Essentially, the y-axis, um, where x is 0, this line here, um, the left-hand line will never cross the line and the right-hand line will never cross that line. Um, that's where it flips between being negative infinity to positive infinity, kind of, it's a way of visualising it. And you can see here, the more points you've got, the better. And with reciprocals, really, what we want is the points to be between 0 0.5 and negative 0 0.5 um, for this question. So we could do probably another coordinate at a quarter and minus a quarter, um, would help us um, and yeah uh, that's how you plot a reciprocal formula for the volume of a sphere is four thirds pi r cubed so we're going to do four thirds times pi times the radius cubed which is 17 and that gives us 20,579.5 Two six blah blah blah. So to two decimal places that would be twenty thousand five hundred and seventy nine point five three. So I'm just going to write this question out just a bit bigger so we can see it a bit better. Okay, so we've got numbers and we've got letters. Let's focus on the numbers first. We've got seventy seven over eleven. So 77 divided by 11 is just 7. So the answer will just be 7 with the numbers. And here we've got uh, x to the power of 11 divided by x to the power of 6. When you divide powers you, we're of the same base, and they're both x, you take them away. So you do 11 take away 6, which is 5. There are a couple of different methods for drawing a graph, and we're going to do the cover-up method. So I'm going to start just by writing out the equation. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to completely cover up, and I'm going to do this with a little highlighter maybe. I'm going to cover up the minus 3y. I'm just going to cover up the y, the y term. And so what that leaves me with is 10x equals minus 30. So if I get my solving lines in, I just need to divide by 10 both sides. Um, so we've got x equals uh, minus 30 divided by 10 is going to be minus 3. Now x equals minus 3 gives us the x-intercept. So we know that the x-intercept is minus 3. What is the x-intercept? Well, it's where the graph will hit the x-axis. So it will hit it at minus 3. I'm going to do the same thing again. But this time, I'm going to cover up the um, x term. I'm just going to cover this up. And so we're going to end up with minus 3y equals minus 30. Again, put my lines in. And this time, I'm going to have to divide both sides by minus 3. And so we've got a minus divided by minus, which is a positive. 30 divided by 3 is 10. So our y-intercept will be 10, y equals 10, so that would be here. And we know that the minimum amount of points we need to be able to draw a graph accurately, well, to draw a graph are two. So if we've got two points, we can draw a graph. And here we do have two points. So I'm just going to draw in this graph as best as I can. And make sure your graph goes for the complete graph that make sure your line continues on for the complete graph and don't just draw it between the x and the y intercepts. You can complete a unique version of this paper by going to our OnMath site. OnMath is full of free content to help you prepare for your exams such as topic based papers, demon questions and mini mocks. If you like what we do, please consider subscribing.